What it is, what it do, YouTube. We back with another video, and we're going to be recreating this infinite clone zoom effect. But before I get into that, I'll let you know if you use code SPOOKY24 at checkout, you can get 20% off anything in the store until November 1st. And I just recently released the overlay pack. For more information, click the link in the description. And for this effect, I already got my subject rotoscoped out. I use Magic Mask, got it rendered in place. If you need help with any of that, you can click on one of these videos in the link in the description. Right now, I'm actually going to hit backspace and to get rid of that. And I'm going to the effects panel. And I'm going to grab a fusion composition. I'm going to leave the fusion composition at the default time limit of five seconds and then go into fusion. Now, in fusion, I'm just going to move my media out there into the bottom. I'm going to go into my media pool and grab the clip I was working with. The media pool down and then grab a background node. I'm going to move these over to the side here. And I'm going to grab, I'm going to double click an empty space. I'm going to grab two image planes which will create a merge 3D. And I'm going to connect these to the image plane. I'm going to box select these and move them over to the side. I'm going to select the merge 3D and grab a camera 3D and a renderer 3D. And I'll connect the render 3D to the media out. I'm going to select the image plane from my background and click on transform and inspect the tab. And I'm going to move it way back on Z space. You want to move it back pretty far because you're going to use the scale to increase the size. That way you can basically create this infinite background. Now I've repositioned my viewers. I scroll around, I can see how, see now I have a bunch of space in between the camera and the background. Basically give me more space to play with, with the, when it comes to the infinite clones. So now I'm gonna click on the background though, and I'm gonna select my color. So go to the switch tab, select the color, I'm gonna pick white, and then I'm gonna just move the dial a little bit, pick a more or less a off-white color, and then I'm gonna hit okay. Then I'm gonna click on the image plane for my media one, which is my subject. Go to the transform and inspect the tab, and just move it back on Z space until the subject comes into play. It's about right there is good enough. Now my future composition is five seconds, but the clip here is only playing for so many frames. I think around by frame 60, it cuts off. So now what we're gonna do is click on the media one, go in the inspector tab. Down here you just see reverse and loop. I'm just gonna click on loop and basically gonna replay those actions throughout the clip. Now I'm gonna move my image plane up and my media one, and I'm basically gonna select a duplicate node. So I'm gonna hit control space, type in DU. I'm gonna get the duplicate 3D. It should pop up automatically due to the fact we're working in 3D space. So I'm gonna hit enter. And now I'm going to go over here and select how many copies I want. I'm going to just put in six for right now. Then I go to the Z offset. I'm going to move, move them back. I'm also going to move over on the X axis to create this basically like this tunnel effect. Then with the duplicate 3D to select, I'm going to hit control and space. I'm going to type in transform. I'm going to get the transform 3D. With the transform 3D, we're just going to move over in X space to move our subject over. If you want to, you can make them bigger or smaller if you want. I'm going to make them go back to my image plane and move them up on Z space. Make them a little bit bigger, then go back to the transform, move it over a little bit more, back into focus of my on my x axis, and then I'm gonna go back into the duplicate node and move the x axis back a little bit. And then I'm gonna move my z axis just to give more space in between the clones. As you can see there, that last one clipped out. So if I go over into the 3D view, you see it's way back here. I'm just gonna move it back in about right there. If you get any value out of today's video, remember to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you ain't already. Hit that notification bell, that way you know when I upload any new content. So now we're gonna make a basically another tunnel of our clones on the other side. What we're gonna do is double click an empty space, hit control and space, and then hit DU for another duplicate node. And move this image plane up. You're just basically gonna take the output of the image plane connected to the th duplicate 3D. Then take the output of the duplicate 3D and connect it back to the merge 3D. Then I'm going to type in six on the clones again. Then I'll grab another transform 3D. So I'm going to click on the duplicate, hit control space, transform, move this down here. And then I'm going to move it on the X axis as well over here and go back to the duplicate and move in Z space. About right there. And then I move a little bit on the X axis. I'm going to have mine basically going to like a little point towards the end. You can set them however you want to though. Now, of course, all my clones are basically just copying one another. I'm going to click on my transform and go back to X axis. I'm going to move this over just a little bit, basically one right in the corner. If you want your clones to be more of a vertical line, just go into your duplicate 3D node and then just change the, the X axis. About right there, be more of a vertical line. Like I said, I'm going to have mine kind of converge into a point almost. Now, playing it back, you just see they all basically just doing the same motion. So to kind of offset the time and go up here to time offset, I'm going to turn this one up. And then the first duplicate node I've made, I'm going to a little bit beyond the default point, which is this little notch here. Now we're gonna animate the camera. So now we're gonna animate the camera. So I'm gonna click on my camera 3D. I'm gonna inspect the tab on the transform. I'm gonna select use target. Now if you go into the merge 3D, 
which I have in the first viewer, you should see this little box icon come up. The basic, basically, this little box is going to tell the camera what to look at. So I'm going to move this back on Z space. You see the little box move here. Depending on how you want the camera to move is where you basically want to place the camera. So if you want to move it up on the Y axis, just be mindful that it will basically see more of the background, which if you go into controls, you can narrow them or widen the camera view or narrow it however you want to. And so if you want to bring this down, it'll narrow the view, bring it in a little closer. And then of course, if you want to widen the lens out, you can do that as well. I'm gonna leave it as default for right now. Go back to transform. I'm gonna click this white icon here to reset the Y axis. And basically just gonna keep my camera locked in on the Z axis. So then I go up here to Z axis translation, set the keyframe, then I go to the last frame of my clip, which should be frame for one, frame 119. Then I just zoom in through my clones. I have it stopped by right, basically right when the stop right at the background node. So now if I go back to the first frame, Play it back and you get this little zoom. I'm going to the spline tab, select camera 3D, click this icon here to zoom to fit. I'm going to select the icons, hit S to smooth. I'm also going to move this down by right here because I want to create this more of a slow, steady zoom in effect. So I'll pull it out to add a little more easing, and then I'll turn this one up a little bit and bring it back, basically creating like this slow hump. Using this, it'll take a little while for the, the camera to zoom in, so I'm actually going to pull back on the easing to about right here. You get this more slow, more dramatic zoom in effect. So now we're gonna click on the renderer 3D and hit control space and type in lens blur. If I'm not mistaken, I think the lens blur may only be in the studio version. Is it the lens blur or lens distortion? One of them is only in the studio, so I'll show you how to do it with the blur, the lens blur and the regular blur. So I'm gonna click lens blur for right now. I'm just gonna blur out my content and then I'm gonna go to lips mask. I'm basically gonna widen this out, create more of an oval like shape. Then I go into the spectra tab, I'm gonna hit invert. And I'm gonna crank up the mask. I'm just gonna bring this in just a little bit. So basically, it's zooming in. It's everything on the outside of the, the main view is becoming more blurred and distorted. I'm gonna open this up just a little bit more, about right there. And then I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna close this in a little bit more. It's basically to your preference. And if lens blur is not available, you basically do the exact same thing. So I'm just hold shift and remove the lens blur. And you can use something like Gaussian blur. You can use Gaussian blur and then just attach the mask to it. Attach your mask hit. Must get the exact same results, or you can use the regular blur, and once again just attach the mask to it. Now with the regular blur, you will have to crank up the size, whereas the Gaussian blur pretty much comes by default already with a blur, uh, blur values added to it. If you got any questions or concerns, make sure to leave them in the comment section down below. Until next time, y'all be easy.